Good morning, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us on the show here. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Nettie Irampour. It is now 6 a.m., and we're going to start right now with breaking news. This out of Oceanside, there's an investigator investigation rather underway into a shooting that involved several teenagers overnight. CBS 8's Chris Grow is live now in Oceanside with an update for us. Chris? Yeah, good morning, Eric and Netta. And there was at least one person that was shot. We're still waiting to get the status. We know that they were taken to the hospital, but we want to know how they are doing. Now, as for exactly what happened, what we're told is that about a quarter mile from where we are here on Pacific, that there's a boat ramp and that at 1130 at night, police got a call that there was a fight and then a shooting. Now, when they showed up, several cars ran away. Multiple vehicles fled the area. They then located that teen victim about 20 minutes later at the main gate of Camp Pendleton. He was then taken to the hospital there. Now, as for what happened next, they found the suspect vehicle here at Harbor Drive in North Pacific Street, where officers detained about eight teens. So again, several teens involved in this, but we're still not exactly sure what led up to this fight, when that shot was fired, and exactly why the victim was then later found at Camp Pendleton. That is something that investigators are likely uh, rolling over, uh, going through right now, trying to make sure that they are covering all of these angles. Because again, three different locations involved in this one instance. Now, we also don't know if either or if all of these teens are facing charges or if they have been formally charged. So again, when more information, when more clarity uh, does come forward, we'll be sure to let you know. But for now, we're going to send things back to you, Eric and Netta. All right, Chris Crow, thank you so much for that. We'll check back with you shortly here. And now starting today, big update when it comes to masks. They will be required at a few places around San Diego, including Naval Base Coronado and Naval Base San Diego. They will also be required at some local schools. Indoor masking will be required at all San Diego Unified School Districts and offices. And a rise in COVID cases and hospitalizations pushed San Diego County into the high risk level. This applies to students and staff who are in summer school programs. We know the fall season hasn't started yet. Now for Sweetwater Union High School District, masks will be strongly recommended for everybody who's indoors when school starts on Wednesday for them. The county does not currently have a mask requirement in place. However, it strongly recommends mask use following California Department of Health guidelines. Well, right now, Dr. Anthony Fauci says while the BA5 variant is spreading rapidly, there's no evidence yet that it causes severe COVID infections. Meantime, Dr. Fauci confirmed that federal health officials are looking at making the second booster available to people under 50. The goal is to strengthen their defenses against serious infection. The FDA right now is looking at all the data and making a decision, which I think will be reasonably soon. And if so, will there be subcategories like people maybe who are at a higher risk for complications? But let's leave that up to the FDA. Again, only people 50 and older and those under 50 who are immunocompromised are eligible for the second booster right now. Now today, a second suspect accused of stabbing a black teenage girl is scheduled to appear in court for a hearing. This incident happened in Lakeside back in April. Police tell us the 16 year old and a group of others shouted racial slurs at the victim and her family, and they say a fight broke out and then the 16 year old girl was stabbed twice in the back. The other suspect pleaded not guilty to two felonies with hate crime allegations. The girl was taken to the hospital. We do not know her condition still. This morning, the nation is reeling from yet another mass shooting, this time in the town just outside of Indianapolis. A man with a rifle opened fire in the food court at Greenwood Park Mall, killing three and injuring at least two others. Officials said the injured include a 12-year-old girl. That gunman had several magazines of ammunition with him. Greenwood police say another shopper who was legally carrying a firearm shot and killed the gunman. Investigators are still working to gather evidence and figure out a possible motive for that shooting. And today, a new investigation report on the shooting at Rob Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, found 376 local, state, and federal officers. They eventually were on scene, but it took more than an hour before the gunman was confronted and then killed. This was a 77-page report by a committee from the Texas House of Representatives, and it was released to the families of the victims. The city also released new body camera video. And today, the sentencing trial begins for the gunman in the 2018 Parkland High School shooting. That was the one in Florida. A jury will decide whether the shooter should be executed or receive life without parole. 17 people were killed, 17 others wounded in that Parkland shooting. 
A man shot in the head outside of a southeast San Diego liquor store is recovering in the hospital. It happened at Par Liquor on Federal Boulevard near Euclid Avenue. Police arrived to find the man suffering from a gunshot wound to the head. At last report, he was in critical condition. The suspected shooter remains at large. You're asked to call Crime Stoppers if you have any helpful information. Now, after the recent mass shootings, anything that sounds like gunfire can cause a panic, and that's what happened on the Vegas Strip. Police say somebody threw a rock at a glass door at the MGM Grand Hotel, and then the sound of that shattering glass caused people to think shots were being fired by an active shooter. So one person suffered a minor injury after falling while trying to run away. Look at this, everyone frantic there trying to get out. The person who broke the glass at the MGM was arrested and faces a misdemeanor charge of destruction of property. A man wanted for murder is in custody after a chase through the South Bay. It all started around 1 yesterday morning in Chula Vista. The suspect crashed on the 905 freeway near the Caliente exit in Otay Mesa. The suspect got out of his car, made a run for it, and that's when police searched through houses and backyards in the area with the help of a helicopter. An hour later, they found him in an abandoned apartment and arrested him. Police have not released the name of the suspect in this chase or which murder he suspected in. And today, negotiations are expected to resume as some local hotel workers are threatening to go on strike. Union leaders are hoping Hilton San Diego Bayfront representatives will offer a pay raise. Union members are hoping for more than the 50 cent raise they were offered last month. In a statement, the Hilton Bayfront says they're confident about reaching an agreement and they look forward to continuing to welcome their guests. This potential strike comes as thousands of people get ready to visit San Diego for Comic-Con on Thursday. Of course, Comic-Con now just a few days away, right? Preparations are underway. And if you couldn't get your hands on those uh, tickets, don't worry. Fun continues outside of the convention center. There will be a Spider-Man exhibit at the Comic-Con Museum in Balboa Park. We've been inside there to check it out. Pretty cool. Marvel fans can look for Infinity Stones in a daily scavenger hunt at Liberty Public Market. There will also be other pop-up events like a Nintendo and a Star Trek tent, as well as the Hello Kitty Cafe. Many of those tents are also free. We want to let you know about some uh, breaking news that we are following here. There is uh, news that we are hearing of this fire at a market in La Mesa. And you can see the smoke kind of billowing there right now. This happened at the Vine Ripe Market around 515 this morning at Fletcher Parkway near Jackson Street. So this is just uh, east of the Costco there in La Mesa to give you kind of some context. Um, this is a market. They also have a restaurant. It, they call it the uh, the grill vine ripe uh, next to the vine ripe market i'm not sure what may have uh, led to these flames but you can see the crew is out there they've got their truck extended this is a live look from chopper eight of some of the uh, smoke that is billowing in the area uh, you notice that there's a lumber yard behind this too uh, so also something worth pointing out so uh, you see firefighters there on the roof trying to examine what led up to this trying to figure out how to attack it and uh, right now, the good news, not seeing any flames, uh, but crews that are on the scene there actively working this market fire in La Mesa at the Vine Ripe um, Market. So we're keeping an eye on this. May have an impact on traffic as well in the area. So just something to, uh, to be uh, taking into account here this morning as you're planning your travels. Let's check in with uh, Netta now and see how things are looking in the forecast. Yeah, uh, that is a very popular market with Mediterranean, Middle Eastern food. Uh, so let's hope they get that fire out quickly. Uh, but yeah, let's get you caught up on your forecast here. Here we are looking at some overcast conditions. You can see it's kind of blue across San Diego. Hopefully you're not feeling that way. Uh, 65 degrees if you are along the coast and inland. So we have a lot of consistency west of the mountains in the mid to upper 60s for most of you. It's still warm in the mountains though. Julian and Mount Laguna and the 70s, 88 in Borrego Springs. We're slightly cooler than yesterday. Ramona, though, you're seven degrees cooler. Let's take you hour by hour for the coastline. This is mainly for downtown San Diego. You will feel that heat today. You'll notice the mugginess, too. You're probably feeling that already. We do have pretty elevated humidity levels. By 9 o'clock this morning, we'll already be in the 70s. And then here we are staying in the upper 70s through the afternoon. So again, that's downtown San Diego. Expect partly cloudy skies. The marine layer may just hang right here along the coast 
as it does. Now, if you're inland, you'll get the sun, 87 in Escondido, 91 in Ramona, 88 in El Cajon, 110 in Borrego Springs. Now, what we're going to also notice is the mountains and deserts. Keep an eye out towards the east, and that's when you'll likely see some big clouds building, especially during the hottest time of the day between about 2 and 4 p.m. So that's when we could get thunderstorm activity from monsoonal moisture. Here's a check of traffic now, and as I look at these maps, all I'm noticing for now would be just these areas of construction. Quite a few, as you know, uh, if you're driving around town. As far as the South Bay goes, it tends to start to get busy here over the next hour, the 5 and the 805, but for now, we're all in the green. It's looking pretty good. The border wait times seem to be fine, and as far as drive time goes, on the 5 going southbound between the 54 and the border, it should take you only 8 minutes, so speeds are normal right now. Not seeing any major backups. Of course, just Fletcher Parkway right by that Vine Wright Market. That's where you will likely need to stay away because of all the fire crews that are on scene right by the market there in La Mesa. So heads up, if that's part of your morning commute, try to take a different route, an alternative route, so you can get around the fire uh, personnel.